Welcome to the annual Plan for Team Sports version 1.0 How to video. In the first installment, I'm going to show you general organization of the Excel workbook and how to set up the, the starting uh, points and settings to start using quickly. So, the whole workbook is organized basically in two main uh, tabs. The first one is the annual plan, the second one is the training calendar. Uh, all other tabs are related to uh, settings, uh, drop down menus uh, within uh, different components of the annual plan. So, as you can see, we have a uh, annual plan is divided into a couple of sections. The first one is related to a calendar where we enter the basic annual uh, data, uh, you know, starting date, uh, training camp, travel, testing dates. Then it's a skill, a skill component. In this case, that's a soccer or football. Then we have a strength training component, speed training component, power training component, specific conditioning, and general conditioning. All these components uh, you can find the settings for these components in different tabs. They are color coded, so it's quickly uh, it's easy to to organize them and find them in the bottom of the page. Uh, you know, uh, calendar constants could be found in this tab. Football related training constants could be found in green tab over here. One way to uh, reach the settings for each individual component is basically by going on to a different tab or using a provided link uh, on a main uh, main box. So in this case, when a football related training phase, you can set up the phase by clicking uh, on a given link. That's going to take you to a football constant tab where you can set up the drop down menu for a given phase. It's going to be clearer once we start putting some data in. Uh, so basically, each box uh, is organized uh, uh, they share a different they share a common uh, team so for each component of a training system we have a phase subphase number of games which is an automatic indicator that gives us an indication how many games are played in a, in a given week uh, type of the microcycle and uh, a little bit different uh, from component to component uh, a row that gives us some indication of workload. This might be a frequency or might be a manual load entered. Uh, then we have uh, one part of the box that's related to a specific part of a given uh, uh, training component. Same thing for, uh, for example, in strength training we have uh, again phase, subphase, number of games, which is automatic uh, cell, type of the microcycle and weekly schedule that's related to a training frequency and and that's a common theme for every every other uh, training uh, training component the general organization is that columns represent uh, weeks so each column starting from here is a one week within a year clicking on this box we can set up the starting point of the our annual plan as you can see uh, let's start for the 1st July. So here we have an indication of the months. These are uh, uh, weeks or microcycle cycles. So this is the first microcycle, second, third, fourth, and uh, up to 54, which is a uh, number of uh, weeks within a year. Uh, the, row, uh, the row above it is the number of weeks within, uh, within a year. So this is the 27th week in 2013. Over here is the dates within a week. So, uh, you know, if we start the, our annual plan with the uh, 1st of July, that's a Monday. This is a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Uh, using this, you can quickly uh, color code events. If, if you have them, maybe this might be a travel, you can color code it, and this might be a game. Uh, this date also might be again that you can also color code. Clicking on these in a week or microcycle, that's going to take you immediately to a, 
uh, training calendar for, for that given week. For example, on a, if I click on a microsite number four, that's going to take me to a training session stub on a week number four. Microsite number four, so I can quickly and easily uh, enter the daily uh, related data. Uh, so again, I'm using a Serbian local uh, uh, setting, so the dates are written in uh, on Serbian language. This is uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And if you're using on your computer, it's probably going to be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday on, on your own language. So for each day, we have uh, three columns. This one selects the starting time of certain event. Might be 11 training, might be training, might be some team session. And we can enter uh, duration in uh, minutes. Let's say 90 minutes. I, I believe this is a way to uh, quickly see the progressions over, uh, over a week and uh, over a whole month. Uh, by click, clicking here, that's going to bring us back to annual plan. This column over here is also used to give you some indication of uh, some constraints within that week. So I'm going to bring it back to uh, annual plan. So let's say, uh, you know, not going in a, uh, great details, which I'm going to cover in the next uh, next couple of installments. Uh, here we can select the game from drop-down menu. Before we do that, for every drop-down menu, you can go and change it, depending on your own uh, uh, context. So, for example, these are opponents. We can I can go to a calendar constants over here over top, or I could click here, it's going to take me to a, a list, drop down list for uh, opponents. Uh, for, for example, uh, I put uh, 15 uh, opponents, uh, away and a home games, and uh, 9 friendly games. So you can you know, manually enter these and uh, change it. Let's go to annual plan. So for example, let's say week 4, week 4 we can play uh, 2 games. And if I write a game from a drop down menu, it's immediately uh, color coded. Uh, so let's say I played three games in this week. Uh, game number four, or before I say that, uh, I put potentially three games uh, in each week to, to be uh, played. And uh, fourth, fourth game might be a a game that that's uh, played uh, with you know B squad or reserves and that doesn't go directly into a, a workload calculus so it's color coded a bit differently so for example it's color coded as yellow uh, I can also keep track of a training training camp travel uh, break or a, a vacation and testing so for example you know week number four we might have uh, field testing and let's say just for example we might start a training camp in Europe so if I go to week number four and click on the link or go to a training session which is basically calendar if I click here which is quicker that's going to take me to that that week and as you can see I immediately get uh, some information for planning of this week so uh, for this week which is week uh, 30 in this year or uh, fourth uh, microcycle from the beginning of our annual plan, I know I have a, a three games uh, to be played in this week, and uh, I have this uh, squad B game. I also have a field test and uh, a training a training camp in Europe, so I can you know I can quickly see these and uh, enter. So I can maybe enter a game here. game and maybe over here so that gives me a quick uh, information uh, you know you know seeing the big picture in an annual plan and uh, seeing individual trees sort of speaking uh, in a training calendar if I go back to annual plan uh, I can also uh, I can also select the peaking index uh, which is a you know a score from uh, 0 to 10 gives me indication of where do I want my 
results to be the, the best. Again, you can change this one. Uh, say, you know, just to give you a quick example, this might be the highest. Off season might be zero to four or something, and uh, in season might be eight to ten. So, depending on the importance of a game or number of games in a week, you can assign different picking index for for that for that one, and that makes it easier to plan everything else around it. So, in short, the first thing we need to do is to set up the you know start up the annual plan, start the starting date, enter all the unchangeable or stable factors. Which is which might be a, a competition calendar, and uh, stuff related to maybe a, a break or vacations, maybe a spring break, maybe a Christmas break or winter break, anything that that you cannot change. All of this gives you constraints that you work around and gives you some, um, I'll, I'll say milestones or give you some. Uh, uh, again, constraints that you cannot change, but you work around them, and you can uh, start. You know, you, you put them first, and then you feel uh, everything else that you can actually control. Uh, so again, that's a general overview of the how the how the things work. Uh, the, this tab, the first one, training calendar, is a is a main one. Uh, Using this one, you can set all the, as I said, you can set all the constraints. You have a quick links uh, to a, uh, to a sessions to a daily calendar. By clicking on these links, you set up the picking index, the opponents, when are you playing them, uh, training camp, travel, uh, break, and testing uh, uh, testing weeks. Again, these are all drop-down menus which you can select and change. So you can select it over here and by clicking training camp, that's going to take you over to a drop-down list where you can change the list or uh, add or remove some, some of the elements. Just for the sake of example, I just put uh, some random stuff I, I thought might be logical. Uh, and again, all the weeks are organized in a column, so every column represents one week in a year. And as we said, we have a 54 columns or weeks in a year. Uh, let's cover, you know, let's cover the, the calendar, the first box that's the most important. Uh, in the first, first row, you have a period uh, where you can set up uh, your periods, it, which is in season, pre season, or uh, off season, or if you prefer European terminology, it might be a, a transition period, preparatory period, and, uh, and competition period. So, again, these are drop down lists. Let's say we have a preparatory period for a couple of weeks. We can select them, merge, and we can assign a different color code. So, let's say our preparatory period might be uh, green. We have a competition period lasting for a couple more weeks. So let's say I select the competition period and select a amount of weeks uh, I want it to last for. So let's say, I don't know how much is this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten 10 weeks. And we can color code it, let's say in this color, merge. So now I can see uh, the phase, the periods within an annual plan. Again, by clicking on a, on a link here or going to a color a calendar co constants, I can change all those drop-down lists. Uh, sub phases. Let's say I have a GPP for four weeks. Again, merge, and I can color code. And SPP might, might be for three weeks, which I can also color code. Let's say this color. And this gives me some general idea uh, how I want to set up my annual plan. So, in short, what we cover in this one, in this video, is a basic organization of the workbook, the idea of uh, 
columns being weeks, setting up the first setting up the immovable stuff, the constraints, if the training calendar, meets or whatever, uh, travel, testing dates, uh, uh, location dates, and uh, etc. Then we set up the peaking index. Uh, in this example, it starts from 0 to 10. It is, it is color coded. That gives us indication about the progression and content of our uh, <coughs> training components. Then we can set up the periods uh, lasting in weeks and uh, phases. With this, we cover, like, in short, we cover a design of the forest. We can see the big picture, we can see the forest. Uh, with setting this one, we can proceed setting up other related, uh, related training system components. Uh, which I which I'm gonna cover in the next next couple of videos. Again, all the cells are drop down lists, and uh, you can all mo you can modify them all by clicking on a corresponding uh, you know setting tab, or clicking on a link in a I would say control box in the annual plan. So that's it for now, and uh, I'm gonna cover different components individually in the next couple of uh, videos. Till then, stay tuned.